straight shift with the car chick the podcast that's all about cars buying selling fixing and driving and sometimes pretty fast if you're the car chick now here's he is Hey, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of The Straight Shift of 2020. I want to apologize in advance if this podcast has a little bit of echo to the sound. I'm in the process of completely revamping my studio to convert it to a full-time film and podcast studio. So I cleaned it out. It, I'm using just a, an old room in my house that used to be my old office before I built a really cool new one. And I It was starting to look like my garage because it had become the catch-all room or possibly something from an episode of Hoarders. But now that it's cleaned out, what I realize is all that junk was doing a lot of sound dampening for me. (laughs) So until I get it redone and get all the sound dampening materials all over the walls and the ceiling, we may have a little bit of an echo. So I apologize for that. Bear with me. Getting this thing redone is definitely a process. Even if you keep your car in a garage, at home, at work, your car still gets exposed to environmental hazards. Things like tree sap, acid rain, salt, especially if you live up north or by the ocean. And of course, the universal hazard, bird poop. Yes, folks, today we're going to talk about bird poop. And the reason this came up is because I have several clients who have asked me about how they can better protect their car, both inside and out, from things like bird poop because they don't have a garage. And I have several clients up north right now, particularly in Ohio, and they're having to replace their vehicles because the old ones have literally rusted through and are falling apart. So they've been asking me, how can I protect my new car from rust so that it lasts longer? So I've been doing a lot of research on the rust topic. I grew up in Cleveland and then Milwaukee. So I grew up with winter and rust and northern cars, but it's been a long time since I've had to deal with that directly and the technology has changed. So I wanted to share a lot of the research that I have done over the last couple months with you guys. So let's just jump right in. When you go to buy a car, most dealerships, once you get into the dreaded finance office, are going to try to sell you protection products, things that are going to supposedly protect the interior and exterior of your car from a variety of hazards, including some that are self-induced. And the question that I get from my clients is, are these products worth it, especially at the prices that the dealers are charging? And of course, the answer is it depends. Different dealers sell different products depending on where they are geographically located and what products they feel their customers will be most attracted to that they can easily sell that they need protecting from in their area. So for example, dealers here in the South tend to focus on the acid rain that we tend to have or the salt from the ocean spray for folks that live closer to the coast. And of course, we get a lot of bird poop down here in the south because all of your northern birds come down here and hang out with us for the winter. When I'm helping my clients buy cars all over the country, I talk to the dealers about these specific products and try and get more details because a lot of time they don't go into the details. They just talk about the benefits of the product as they see them and make their sales pitch. But these products are very, very different, and some of them are really good, and some of them, quite frankly, aren't worth spending $20 on, much less you know, upwards of $1,000, which is what a lot of dealers charge for these protection packages. So I want to be able to advise my clients on what these products really do. Are the products themselves good? And then are they worth the investment? And of course, negotiating that selling price ahead of time so that we're definitely not paying full price for them. And on the whole, I have found that most dealerships sell essentially the same products. They might be different brands. They might be branded specifically for that dealership group, but they essentially do the same thing. They boil down to paint sealant and fabric protection. And to be completely honest, I am not a huge fan of any of them. The paint sealant that is offered by many dealerships is presented as this super high-tech product used in the aerospace industry, and it protects your paint everything from rust to bird poop. And 
a lot of it is really glorified what we used to call turtle wax. Most people don't use a true wax anymore. There's certainly some out there and they do a good job, but the products have gotten a lot more high tech these days, but it's still usually just a spray on coating that does somewhat seal the paint, but it also gets all over everything else. And let me tell you, the detail people hate this stuff. Part of it is because the product itself is a pain in the butt. And another reason is a lot of times at these dealerships, the person who applies these products is the minimum wage guy in the back you know, that washes all the cars and maybe is a lot porter and may or may not be well-trained in the application of these products. And they're also chewing it quickly to try and get through as many of them as possible. So a lot of these paint sealer spray-on products if you get them on the windows of your car, all over the windshield, it sticks like crazy and then will turn to this cloudy film. And next thing you know, you can't see out of any of your windows. And the detail guys have a terrible time trying to get this stuff off. And furthermore, some of these products are safe to be applied to your rubber and your plastic and any non-metal, but a lot of them are not. If they contain any petroleum-based products, then they're going to break down rubber, which is also a petroleum product. If you remember back to high school chemistry, like dissolves like. So oils dissolve other oils. So if these products contain oils, they're going to dissolve rubbers, which are petroleum based, some plastics, some of your vinyls, etc. So you have to be careful with these products and really know what the ingredients are to know what they're safe to be applied to or get on accidentally or not. Another thing about all these paint sealers and those type of products is if you're buying a new car, most automotive paint experts advise against applying any type of sealer or wax or even from washing your car with soap for at least 30 days, sometimes a couple of months if you can go that long because the paint from the factory has not yet cured. Automotive paints can take a few weeks to even a few months, depending on the environment, to fully cure. And if you wash them too soon or you apply these sealants too soon before the paints have cured, you can actually damage them. So if you're buying a new car, it's good to know when did that car actually come off of the production line at the factory? What was its true birthday? Because if it's been sitting on a dealer lot for a few months, then you're fine. The paint is probably cured by now. But especially now that we're into 2020 and the new models are coming out, people are buying new cars that tend to have come off the finish line pretty early or recently. So it's just good to know that and, and don't do any sort of treatment to the car until the paint has had at least 30 days to cure. Now, one of the reasons that the dealers charge so much for these products is frequently they will include some sort of warranty with it and will make a claim that, you know, if anything does happen to the car inside or out, that it can't be properly cleaned, they will replace certain things. But I would read those warranties very, very carefully, especially the exclusions, because there's only so much that those companies are going to be willing to be responsible for on your vehicle. So I always take those with a huge grain of salt and always want to read them. The fabric protection products for the interior, I also don't feel that they're worth the price that most dealers charge. And again, a lot of these, this is where the warranty tends to apply to. And they'll say that if with these products applied and reapplied regularly, however often that is, it's usually every six months or once a year, that if you do get any sort of stain that they cannot clean, they will replace the fabric. Some of them will even say, you know, we'll protect against, you know, burns, tears. And if you're a person that is rough on the interior of your car, or you've got small children that are rough on the interior to your car, you tend to smell a lot of coffee in your car, it might be worth it to you, especially to have that peace of mind. But you could also save a lot of money simply by applying some better habits. The fabrics that are used in car interiors today have also dramatically improved. So you don't have to protect them as much as we did the old you know, velour seats like are in my mother's 2003 Toyota Corolla. The fabrics now are, are better. They wipe down easily. As long as you get to any spills 
quickly and get them cleaned up, you're very likely not going to have a stain, depending on what it is. You know, if you had an ink pen in your pocket that leaked like one of my clients and friends did, yeah, that's a problem. But there are products that will also get that out. So sometimes you just need to change your habits. You know, don't eat in your car. Don't drink in your car. You know, at least things like coffee. Those are distractions when you're driving anyway. So this might be a good opportunity to not only save some money, but to improve your driving habits and become a safer driver. All right. Sorry, I will get off that soapbox. If you have leather seats, leather needs to be conditioned and cleaned regularly to keep it in good shape because it is like literally skin. So it needs to be moisturized like your skin. If that's not something that you're willing to tackle yourself with products that are available on the market, find yourself a good detail guy or gal and just schedule a regular detail. They'll come out and they will do the conditioning for you, whether it's a mobile detailer or it's a place that you take it. But getting back to the exterior, one of the best and easiest ways to protect your car's exterior from all sorts of environmental hazards is to just wash it regularly. Paints from the factory today are really good, and they have many layers of a good clear coat on top of it to kind of create sacrificial layers to protect the paint. So it, you know, takes a good gouge or a lot of deeper scratches um, or damage from the environment to get through that clear coat. And keeping that clear coat clean from dirt and salt, the droppings from the trees and the birds, that's going to help keep your paint nice and shiny for a long period of time. And a lot of car wash places today have monthly memberships. So you pay like 20 bucks a month. At least that's what they charge around here. And you can take your car through multiple times per month and keep it clean. Just be sure you are looking at a car wash that uses neoprene with their brushes. You want a car wash that has a system that touches your car. You need friction to truly get the car clean. Those touchless ones that are at the gas stations. They're good to rinse some stuff off if you're really in a pinch, but they don't really clean your car. You need friction, but you don't want the older places that still use the plastic brushes because that's what puts those swirls and scratches in your paint. You want the ones that use the neoprene rubber. That's the stuff that scuba suits are made out of, and it is safe for paint. It's even relatively safe for wraps like on my car Maggie. Or if you don't want to go through that hassle, just get a subscription or put together some sort of regular contract with a good detail person and have your car professionally detailed once a quarter or more often if your car gets dirtier more often. So let's talk about bird poop. Here's your factoid for the day. (laughs) I bet you woke up this morning thinking, I'm going to talk about bird poop today. Not something that comes up all the time, but here's your factoid. Birds don't pee and poop separately. They do it all in one. They're just very efficient at eliminating. So their droppings contain the uric acid. And that is the stuff that is corrosive enough to eat through your car's paint. Hence why it is critically important to clean bird poop off of your car the moment you see it. Why do birds poop on our cars? I mean, do they literally look around the environment and say, oh, look, there's some nice pavement I can poop on, but oh, look, there's a car. I would so much rather poop on the car. (laughs) Birds are not that smart, but they do have a natural fight or flight response, quite literally, fight or flight. Birds don't fight for the most part. So loud vehicles, you know, when you start up your car or even just walking by and talking, sudden movements, any of these noises will frighten the birds and it will literally scare the crap out of them. When they are scared, they poop. So it's very natural for if your car is parked under a tree or any place that birds are congregating and you walk up to it, they might get startled when you get out of your car and slam the door. They may get startled and they have pooped on your car. Another perspective is that animals are very efficient and when anything needs to fly, the lighter it is, whether it's a bird or it's an airplane, the lighter, the easier it is to take off. So birds are designed by nature to eliminate any excesses before they take flight. So as they leave the tree, they poop. And if your car is under there, Guess who's going to get hit with that stuff? So bottom line, 
don't park under trees or light poles, telephone poles, the edges of buildings, anywhere birds like to hang out or nest. I know that's easier said than done. Especially here in the south in the summer, we like to park under trees because we need the shade. So when we come outside, you know, our car is hopefully less than 200 degrees inside. You know, I love parking my car in the shade. It helps keep, you know, the wrap and paint from fading. It keeps it a little bit cooler. But the trade-off is I am risking bird poop. So my solution is I'm going to take the shade when I can get it, but I'm also going to be very conscious of bird poop and clean that stuff off ASAP. If you do feel you want an extra layer of protection for your paint, especially if you don't have a car that's garaged regularly, the best thing is this new technology called nano ceramic coating. Now, I talked about this product in more detail back in episode, I think it was 14, the right way to detail your car, when I interviewed one of the best detail guys in the business, Dr. Swirl Killer himself. And John, Dr. Swirl Killer, talked about how these coatings really work because he's one of the people that is certified to apply them. This is not something that you can typically apply yourself. It does require a certified trained person to do it, but a lot of your higher end good detail shops will know how to do this and have the products. But what it is, is nanoceramic coating forms a semi-permanent bond with the surface of your vehicle. So if you were to look at the surface of your vehicle with a microscope, Paint is not perfectly smooth. It has little pores in it like your skin does. And the nanoceramic coating fills in those pores and creates a very smooth and additional, let's call it a sacrificial layer that will protect your car against things that are out to destroy the paint. It does not mean that your car is completely maintenance-free. You still have to keep it clean. You still have to wash it, but this ceramic coating makes that way easier because it does deter the dirt and everything else from sticking to it, and it makes it a lot easier and faster to clean up. But it's also expensive. You know, it runs, depending on the size of your vehicle, around $2,000 or so. But for some people, that may be worth it to them to protect their investment, especially if they love to have a beautiful, shiny car all the time. So that's something to look into. A ceramic coating can also help protect the car's body panels from rust up north or at the beach or other wintry kind of places. So I'm going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk all about rust. And even for those of you who live in the South, this is stuff that you need to know. So I'll be right back after this. Do you hate car shopping? Do you worry about being taken advantage of or about finding the right car at a great price? Buying a car can be a frustrating and time-consuming experience. But what if you could get a great deal without having to do a ton of research, without having to haggle, and without the fear of buying a lemon? You can. As your personal car shopper, the Car Chick will help you pick the perfect car based on your unique lifestyle, budget, and personality. She'll handle all of the legwork and negotiating for you. All you have to do is sign the papers and take the keys. It's that easy. To learn how the Car Chick can save you time, money, and hassle on your next car purchase, give us a call at 704-248-8706. That's 704-248-8706. Or visit us on the web at thecarchick.com. Ah, the Car Chick is back. For more Straight Shift. Welcome back to The Straight Shift. We're talking about how to protect mostly the exterior of your car. Now we're going to talk about rust. I know you're thinking, oh, thank goodness, we're done talking about bird poop. What is rust? Especially for those of you who have grown up in the South and have not just lived through the brutal winters that I grew up with up North. Let me explain what rust is and how it works. Rust is another name for iron oxide, and that occurs when iron or an alloy that contains iron, like steel, which is what your car is mostly made out of, is exposed to oxygen and moisture over a long period of time. 
So over time, the oxygen combines with the metal at an atomic level, and it forms a brand new compound called an oxide, and that weakens the bonds of the metal itself. So that's why with rust, it literally looks like the metal is disintegrating, because guess what? It is. So for a rust to form, all you need is iron, water, which is an electrolyte, and oxygen. So technically, any car can rust if the metal is exposed to moisture and oxygen for long enough. That's why we see the classic cars you know, that have been sitting out in a field or in a barn for decades. They're going to rust, even if they're in the South. They're not going to rust nearly as badly, but they're still eventually going to rust. The humidity will eventually get to them. Now, why is this such a problem up North? Well, up North... It snows, and the DOT dumps literally tons of salt all over the roads to prevent ice from building up on the pavement and making everything slicker than snot. And salt is an electrolyte, just like water. It's just a much, much more efficient one. And this is why cars exposed to even salt air, like at the beach, are more susceptible to rust. Salt, as an electrolyte, will cause, you know, combined with oxygen, will cause that rust to form faster than just water and oxygen. And the salt gets all over, you know, when it's put on the roads and you drive on the roads, you know, everything gets spewed up and spilled all up underneath your car. And that stuff gets in every freaking nook and cranny. And it's also abrasive. So salt can scratch and pit that clear coat and create little places, little valleys, little grooves, little pathways for that moisture then and that salt to get to that bare metal. It literally cuts through those sacrificial layers on your car. And to make matters worse, a lot of places are now, a lot of states are starting to use a salt brine mixture, which adds sugar into the mix. And that sugar ensures that the salt sticks better to the roads, but it also ensures that it all sticks way better to every freaking surface of your car. So rust starts at these vulnerable places and it's places where like the body panels will meet or where there's a scratch or a dent or a chip, anything where that sacrificial layer is thin or like where the body panels meet, there's just, there are little tiny edges somewhere where the metal is not completely covered. And, you know, these are the underside of your car, your suspension components, your wheel wells, and at the edges of your body panels. So this is where you will usually see rust starting to form on a car. Once it's there, even in this little teeny weeny area, it spreads and pretty rapidly, depending on the environment, to all the other metal on your car. And it even gets to the fuel lines, the gas tank, your brake lines, even the electrical wiring. Rust is enemy number one for vehicles, especially in the north. And it's like a virus or a cancer in the way that it spreads and the fact that there is no true cure. You can't really win the war on rust. You can just put up a valiant effort in fighting it. And that's what northern drivers and dealers will do. There's a lot of so-called rust proofing and rust prevention products on the market. But do they really work? One common type of undercoating you'll see is this black rubberized coating that some dealers and other companies will apply to the undercarriage of the car, things like your wheel wells, your floor pans, etc. I personally don't like this stuff. While it does have the added benefit of creating a sound dampening layer so it can help reduce road noise and make your car a little bit quieter, it also can trap moisture that is already on your car if whoever applies it is not super careful and really dries the underside of your car really well to make sure there is no moisture up in there, then it can trap it and actually make the situation worse. It'll rust between that layer and your car. But the other thing that I don't like is that some dealers, and I have seen this happen down here and I'm not going to name any names, but it was, let's say, a large, big box, no haggle used car dealership. They had sprayed that stuff underneath some of the cars that they had bought at the auctions up north and brought down here to the south where people don't necessarily think about, oh, I shouldn't buy a northern car because it's going to have rust. 
They did that to actually hide the rust that is already there so that the unsuspecting Southerners don't notice and still buy the crappy car. So that's one of the reasons that I don't like those. They're also just kind of, can be kind of messy and they just look terrible underneath your car. But some anti-corrosion sprays actually do work and are not bad to use. A lot of them were developed for actually use in airplanes and even marine applications where, you know, boats can rust easily because they're in salt water all the time. And airplanes are always up in the air with all the moisture in our environment. So anti-corrosion is very important in both of those industries and they've translated over into the automotive industry. And then a lot of those combine waterproofing to lock out that moisture along with lubrication to help keep those parts moving properly. And the way a lot of those products work is they loosen the existing rust and corrosion and also loosen and get rid of dirt, the old lubricants, etc. And then they dry to a thin, almost waxy layer that clings to the metal. It's not a permanent bond and they last anywhere from a few months to maybe a year or so but you have to reapply them. But a lot of them, you know, are, will hold out through the winter and people that live up North, that's really what they're trying to do is start of every winter. It's time to put on another layer of that undercoating and protect the car through the winter. And let's just get through it. And this can stave off the rust for a while. It's not you know, going to completely prevent it, but it will help your car last longer. But you have to be careful with these, just like with the paint sealants I talked about before the break. Some of the products are safe to apply to rubber and plastic and vinyl and those type of parts, and some are not. So if you are going to use one, it's best to find one that is safe to hit all these other applications, because when you're applying it to the underside of your car, especially if you do it yourself, it's just not that precise. And there are things, you know, underneath your car that are non-metal and it's going to get all over everything. And especially if you want to get up in every nook and cranny that you possibly can, you've got to use a product that's safe to hit the other stuff. And they can even help protect those rubber parts because, you know, rubber will also get corroded by the salt as will the plastic. But there are some that are not safe. So be careful to avoid those. Also be careful to make sure that the spray and its ingredients will not void your car's warranty. Anything that does contain any petroleum-based products that could corrode the rubber and plastic parts can void your vehicle's warranty because now you've applied something that is eating through parts that are not supposed to be eaten through and it will cause them to fail early and your car warranty person will be like, "Ah, nope, not going to happen. So always read the instructions. Better yet, get a professional company that does this every winter to do this for you. I consulted one of my dear friends, Amy Matinette. She runs a shop up in Vermont. And let me tell you, in Vermont, the guaranteed thing they have up there is snow and ice and salt and therefore rust. And it's one of those states where they're doing that salt brining thing with the sugar too. So this is something that she deals with, with her customers and on her own cars every single winter. And she told me that she swears by a product called Corrosion Free. I mean, how easy is that? Good branding, guys. It's safe for paint, electronics, rubber, plastics, vinyl, metal, everything. It's easy to apply, doesn't drip everywhere, and it can last up to 18 months, although she recommends her customers reapply it every winter to be safe. And it's also affordable. It's not going to break the bank. It's not going to void your warranty. And even better, it is non-toxic and environmentally safe. So you're not going to have to worry about, you know, getting cancer from inhaling these fumes or, you know, destroying our environment. Amy swears by this stuff, and I trust her years of experience both as a shop owner and as someone who has lived up in Vermont and has dealt with rust pretty much her whole life. There are some other products that are more elaborate that combine rust prevention with like primer and paint. And these products will actually chemically convert rust into the more stable iron tannate. So it'll convert it from iron oxide into iron tannate. And I am not going to break that down into the chemical formulas, people. But what it does is stops the rust from spreading because it literally changes what it is. Some work better than others, and some are easier to apply than others. And a lot of body shops and detail companies up north will offer these products. I haven't found any dealerships that offer products like that. They tend just to do the undercoating sealers 
And depending on which one they use, is it a good one or not? You just have to research that depending on what the brand of product they use. But, you know, the the ones that are the primer and the paint, they tend to coat the whole underside of the car in those and they can get up in all the little nooks and crannies. I don't have any personal experience with those products, but we do have a product that we use on the TV show that I do called Rust Rescue. For those of you who don't know, I do a TV show called Rust Rescue, and it's all about restoring classic cars on a $10,000 budget for the DIYer. And we use a product called Zero Rust. We found these guys at SEMA a couple of years ago. Of course, we saw the name of the product and we're like, okay, we must know what this is. And Zero Rust, we use it to coat the frames and the firewalls and a lot of the suspension parts for the classic cars that we are restoring. It's a direct-to-metal kind of modified alkalid coating. It controls rust and corrosion literally by putting down an impermeable barrier at the steel level. It adheres to the steel. It almost becomes a part of it. And it starves the surface of oxygen, therefore stopping the rust process. It's used primarily in the car restoration market, although you can use it on anything. You can use it on, you know, fences. I'm going to apply it to the wrought iron railing out in the um, steps outside my house. You can put it on wagons, farm equipment. It has a variety of uses, but we fell in love with it in the auto restoration business because you know when we get these rust buckets, <laughs> these rust rescues, and we clean them up, you know, we wire brush, we remove all the surface rust that you can, then you wash it down with a good degreaser and you find the good metal. Obviously, if there's a part of the car that is, you know, completely rusting through, you have to clean that off and then patch it with good metal. You know, zero rust is not going to repair something that the oxidation process is sort of literally eat through the metal and now it's literally falling apart, but you get the rust off, you make sure you've got good metal and then you apply this stuff to it. And we have seen these cars go for, you know, over a decade without ever rusting again. The stuff is amazing. You just can't use it or they don't recommend you use it on the car's body panels because it is a very hard product and it doesn't flex, and car body panels need to be able to flex a little bit. Although other people in the restoration business have been really pushing the envelope with this stuff because we love it so much. I have never seen it used on the as an undercoating for a modern car because modern cars, you know, there's, like I said, there's a whole bunch of other parts under there, and you don't want to get zero rust on your rubber parts or, or any of those. And so we do it in the restoration business because we are literally disassembling the car down to the frame, in many cases taking the body off of the frame. So we can apply the product to the specific parts that we need to, and then you reassemble the car. With a modern car, that's not realistic to do, and you know, that's why it tends not to be used for that. But I wish that we could use it as an under true undercoating spray on modern cars because this stuff is the bomb. And they are not sponsoring this podcast in any way, shape, or form. They do sponsor our TV show, but we use the product because we love them and it's good stuff. So if you're doing any restoration, I highly recommend you check out Zero Rust. But the bottom line is, you know, with modern cars, you can apply some products that will help stave off the rust, but you're not ever going to really fully win that war. So truly the bottom line for keeping the exterior of your car in good shape is wash it, wash it, wash it. This includes up north in the winter, you get the salt on the roads, you know, washing your car when it is 20 degrees or 20 below is really not the most fun thing to do, but they do have car washes up there and you want to go to a place that will wash it off really well. Also have an undercarriage wash to just at least try and rinse off all the salt that accumulates from the roads. And hopefully you've got an undercoating to protect it as well. And then dries the car really well to get rid of that moisture. Because if you just wash it and you go back out into the cold and there's still water on your car, you always want to have that water off of it because it's just going to make things worse. So folks, if you want to keep your car in good shape and protect it from all sorts of environmental hazards, including your own children in the back of the car or yourself if you're drinking coffee, clean your car regularly inside and out. And on that note, 
I'm going to go call my mobile detail guy because Maggie desperately needs a bath and I'm going to go get that scheduled. Folks, have a great start to your 2020 and drive safely. I'm out of here. The Straight Shift Podcast is copyright Leanne Shattuck, The Car Chick, 2017. All views expressed by guest and or co-hosts are those of the guest and or co-hosts and not necessarily those of Leanne Shattuck or The Car Chick.